We had a big flare with a solar radiation storm, two fast solar wind streams back to back, and solar storms launched all around. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely holding our attention. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, back on the 20th, if you look on the west limb, you can see region 2929. Wham! Right there, did you see that? It fires off an M5.5 class flare. This launches a small radiation storm that lasted for a few days at Earth. And also, if you can see, whoosh, right there, that launches a solar storm. It was kind of like shaken up by that solar flare. And so, you know, it kind of destabilizes those regions. So we actually had two solar storms that were launched off to the west of Earth. Now, one of them kind of grazes Earth eh, right about now. We're not seeing much of an effect, but it does kind of clear the way because we do have from the southern uh, hole right here, this coronal hole is rotating in through the Earth strike zone and that fast wind stream, hey, now it's decluttered. It doesn't have to sweep out all the junk in the way. So we've got a, a fast solar wind that's going to be hitting Earth here in the next day or so. That's going to be followed by some more fast wind from a second coronal hole that's here in the north. We've got two bursts of fast solar wind. We could easily be getting some storming from that here. And that's not all. Take a look at the East Limb. Do you see this? Wham! Right there! There is another solar storm launch. This is a beautiful solar storm. It's not Earth-directed. This one's going to go east of Earth. And then look in the north. Whoosh! There goes yet another solar storm. So the sun is really getting active, and we're going to have to pay close attention because this region over here, 2934, is a solar storm producer, and it could easily be rotating and giving us another solar storm in the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days. So as as we take a look at our far-sided sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. It does look like this, uh, the bright regions and maybe even solar storm producers are not over yet. We've got more fun coming because you can actually see some of these regions erupting. One of them was actually that one in the north that we saw that's not numbered. But if you look past it to the east limb, you actually can see a region that is yet to be ro to rotate into Earth view. That one's likely going to be numbered, and you see maybe Maybe one, maybe two regions in the south also going to be rotating into the into Earth view here in the next couple days. So we're going to boost that solar flux back up for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders and get that uh, radio propagation back into the good range on Earth's day side here, hopefully within the next week. Switching to our radiation storm threat meter, you can see back on the 20th, after we had that big M5.5 class flare, you can see those radiation storm particle fluxes jump up and they passed the S1 radiation storm threat level. But look, they didn't last all that long and that's good news. This was due to the fact that that solar storm and that solar flare were actually launched to the west of Earth and that solar storm did not pass Earth, so it allowed those fluxes to die down pretty quickly. But as you can see, both the blue and the green traces are also elevated, that means that the spectrum is a bit on the harder side because that they actually had uh, higher energy particles in there. And that's not necessarily good news for uh, aviation passengers. And as we switch to our C's real-time uh, radiation monitor in GEO, you can see the total dose for satellites in GEO is actually elevated into the yellow. This is once again due to those solar energetic particle events. Luckily, that dose has kind of died back down over the last couple days. But if you notice, the internal charging is now beginning to pick up. Well, that could even get a little bit worse. And that's due to those fast solar wind streams that will end up hitting Earth over the next couple days. So if you happen to be a satellite operator in GEO, just understand you have multiple sources right now for anomalies on your spacecraft, so stay vigilant. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, and by the 29th, the moon will be only about 10% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, now's a perfect chance. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have multiple fast wind streams coming from two coronal holes that are going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone this week. That means lots of potential storming. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm. And this will easily last throughout pretty much the entire week, kind of off and on, because again, once one fast 
stream gets through uh, and begins to calm down, we have yet another fast wind stream that will be coming. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm, and then even 30% chance of active conditions after that. And again, this could easily last throughout this entire week with two of those uh, fast wind streams from two coronal holes. We also have even another coronal hole coming in after that, and this doesn't even include the potential for solar storms, so Aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, believe it or not, everything is back to being in the green when it comes to big solar flares. Most of the active regions that were giving us all the trouble last week have now rotated to the sun's far side. We only have a couple pretty quiet regions left on Earth's day side, and this is good news for you GPS users. GPS reception on Earth's day side should be really great without any risk for radio blackouts right now. But this does mean that that solar flux has now dipped back into the high 80s uh, and, and low 90s, and that means we're at the high end of marginal for radio propagation on Earth's day side. Hopefully that will be boosting back up here over the next few days as we have some new regions rotate into Earth view. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, just hang in there because I guarantee you radio propagation will get better. Now also because we are still climbing out of solar minimum, we are still in the D2 minor range, and luckily that radiation storm that we had last week has been dying down, so we don't have to worry about any enhancement in that regard any, any longer. So most of the airline passengers are just fine. It's just the air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are still in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has been holding our attention. Even though we managed to get away from that big M-class flare that fired that radiation storm, it didn't last all that long, that region, region 2929, has now moved behind the sun's west limb, so we shouldn't see any more radio blackouts for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders or you GPS users, so that's some good news. The other thing, though, is that we do have two solar wind fast streams that will be hitting Earth here in the next couple days from a couple coronal holes that are rotating in through the Earth strike zone. One of them from the south will rotate in within the next day or two, and then the other from the north that will come in a few days later. And believe it or not, we have even one more that's going to rotate in, in through the Earth strike zone after that. So we're going to be having multiple fast wind streams that are going to be hitting us. And Aurora photographers, you should definitely be happy about that because we have multiple chances for some Aurora reaching even down into mid-latitudes. We also have a few regions on our Earth-facing disk that are solar storm producers. Now, right now, the sun is kind of launching solar storms willy-nilly, and Earth doesn't seem to be in the crosshairs, but it could change here over the next couple days as some of these regions rotate through that Earth strike zone, so we're definitely going to be paying attention there. And now, finally, you GPS users, well, you know, gosh, we've got a little bit of issue with some uh, elevated uh, solar or ra uh, radiation storm particles, which causes issues, especially at high latitudes for GPS reception. But those seem to be settling down now. Thank goodness for that. And we don't have any risk for any more big radiation storms or radio blackouts. So that's good news. But these solar storms are really not all that fun, and they can cause some issues for you on Earth's night side, anywhere near Aurora, and also during uh, dawn and dusk when things seem to be reasonably unstable in anyway, so just stay vigilant if you're near any of those areas. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.